Hi friends, welcome to Azure Content. This is part 2 in PySpark series. In this video, we are going to learn about RDDs in PySpark. In the previous video, we have had a session of introduction about PySpark and in that video, we had a quick glimpse about RDDs, uh, which is basically one of the modules in PySpark. So in this video, we will learn about it in details. So let's get started. So RDD stands for Resilient Distributed Dataset. It is one of the key building block of PySpark and why it has been given the term Resilient Distributed Dataset, we will understand that as well. So basically, the term resilient itself means anything which is capable of tolerating or withstanding uh, some disruptions. So that is called resilient. So it is called resilient because of the fact that it is fault tolerant in nature, which we have discussed in our previous video as well, which means if there is any kind of loss of data, it will be able to recover it because it is fault tolerant in nature. And the other characteristic of RDD is that it is immutable in nature, which means once you create the RDD, you cannot change it. If you perform any additional operation, then it will create a new RDD instead of changing the existing RDD. Okay. And then it allows distributed computation. That's the reason it is also called distributed data set. Because if you see this image, the data present in the RDD are segmented into partitions. Okay, so you can see they are segmented into different partitions across multiple nodes within the Spark cluster. So that's the reason it is called partitioned data or distributed data set. Okay. So basically, RDD is the collection of data that can be processed, transformed and manipulated with the help of various operations in PySpark. And the data will reside in various partitions across multiple nodes in the Spark cluster. Okay. So now let's try to create RDD. It can be created by multiple ways. We can create RDD using parallelized collections or we can have an external data set or data source through which we can create an RDD. And a new RDD can be created with the help of an existing RDD and with the help of data frames also we can create an RDD. So we will see everything in details uh, with the help of a demo. So we will go to the Synapse workspace where I have a notebook that I created which is attached to my Spark cluster which I have created beforehand. So you can go to the manage pool section and you can directly create the Spark pool which will give you the computation which will help us to run the notebook. Okay. So let me cancel it. I already have it created. So I have attached my notebook with this cluster. Okay. So I have given the node as the minimum that is possible. And that means the small computation I'm using because this is just for the demo purpose. And I have chosen PySpark, which is the default language in the uh, Synapse notebook. Okay. So we will go ahead with this. So first of all, you need to initialize this cluster with the help of this run all button. Okay. So I had already executed it. So my cluster is also ready. So now we need to create an RDD and for that we need a Spark object. Okay. So if you are building this in local, then what you need to do is from PySpark.SQL. Let me zoom it a bit. Okay. We need to import Spark session. You can see. Now we need to create a Spark object using this Spark session. Okay. So what we can do is if we don't know what are the methods present in this Spark session, we can use help method and inside this I will search inside spark session what are all the methods that can help me to create the spark object okay so let's wait for some time yeah so you can see it has given us all the details about this spark session class which is present in this pyspark.sql.session module you can see the examples as well how to create a spark session so this is what we have to do we have to create an object of this spark session so we need to use the builder attribute present in this spark session so what i'm going to do is let me copy the whole thing and keep it in a notepad and we will create the spark object with this example itself okay so let me open a notepad and we are going to do the same thing that was present in the example okay so let me remove the help function and here we are simply going to create a spark object with the help of this spark session dot builder attribute and inside builder master you can see and here we need to give local dot you need to give an app name let me give app name say notebook okay 
and then we can pass some additional configurations here okay you need to give some values i'm going to skip that i'm just going to use this get or create function in order to create our spark object so let me run this so you can see now our spark object is ready and if we use type function on top of this spark object it should give us that this spark object is of spark type you can see this is an object of spark session class itself okay so now our spark object is ready now we can use this spark object in order to create our rdd okay so what we can do is we can use this spark then let me put dot and then you can see all these functions are av available in this spark object so let me go down i am searching for spark context so you can see we have this uh, attribute called spark context present in this spark object okay so now inside spark context we are we will be searching for something called parallelize you can see parallelize method is present which will help us to build the rdd so inside this parallelize function we need to send the collection of data okay so let me create a list of numbers okay 1 2 3 suppose this is the list of numbers that i am going to use in order to create my rdd so now we will just extract this rdd with the help of collect function and it will give us the output okay let's wait so you can see our rdd is created with the help of parallelize function in this spark object and the data that we have passed is the list of numbers 1 2 3 and this is what is coming as the output instead of list if we want to print the data as an individual numbers then what we are going to do is so let me put it in a variable say var okay and then we will iterate through each of the objects present in this uh, variable okay because this object is present in the array format right so what we'll do is for item in where okay here we will just print the item we are iterating through each of the item and it will print one by one you can so you can see each of the data present in this list is coming one by one because we are iterating and then printing these items okay so this is one way of creating the rtd we have used parallelize function for this and basically this spark object which we have created using spark session dot builder uh, property is already present in the pyspark module of synapse notebook okay so what we can do is we can eliminate this whole part so now if i run this it will successfully give me the data and it has created the rdd as well without any problem because spark object is already present but if you are building it in local then you need to create the spark object explicitly and then you can use it to create the rdd okay so by far we have created the rdd for the list of numbers but we can do the same thing if the data is present as a tuple or a json so let me do the same for tuple as well let's initialize a data variable and here we will have the data as a tuple okay instead of just the numbers so here let me give the data say annu and say azure and the third one t say content okay now we will create the rdd on this data variable using spark dot spark context dot parallelize function again and here we will pass the data variable and then we will extract this data using collect function again so let's try to see the out output so you can see rdd is created and we are able to see the data as a tuple as well okay and one thing to mention here is instead of using spark dot spark context you can simply use sc dot parallelize okay let me remove all this so let me type it here sc and if you clearly see uh, the definition of it it is pyspark.sparkcontext right it's basically the same thing that we were using by writing spark.sparkcontext and we can simply replace it with sc instead of writing spark.sparkcontext and now if i give dot you can see all the attributes present in this spark context is again visible and we need to use parallelize function so let me type parallelize you can see it is present and then we can use data here and if i rerun it it will basically do the same job so instead of spark dot spark context we can optimize it even further by using sc so now uh, what we will do is we will do the same job for json data as well so let me initialize the json object 
or uh, we can call it dictionary as well in python so let me name it give uh, the first uh, key value pair as name annu and then say gender email country india okay now similarly let me create rtd on top of this json data using parallelize function so here i will pass the data variable and then rdd dot collect okay so let's run so now you can see it is not giving us the full data it is just giving us the key present in the json so why this is happening is because the parallelize function will iterate through only the keys present in the dictionary if we want to get the whole json out of it then we need to treat it as a list so let me use this bracket in order to get the whole content and let's try to run it again so now you can see it is giving the whole json as the output so now we are good with the json data and we can also create an rdd with the help of parallelize function and instead of writing the whole data manually we can use something called range function where we just need to define the starting range of the data and how many number of data we need so for example if we require 10 data then we need to give 11 as the range and then let me use collect function to extract the data so you can see it has created the rdd successfully with the help of range function we have not explicitly defined the data so we have just defined the range and it is able to give us the data as well so we have created rdd with the help of parallelized collections now we are going to create rdd with the help of external data source so what i mean by that is i have data in my adls account which is azure data lake storage from any of the external data source as well we can directly uh, create the rdd okay so if i preview the data present in this text file so you can see i have the data uh, starting from 1 till 10 it is residing in my rdd data.txt okay so this is the file so we are going to create the rdd again so now let me name it as external data source okay and we are going to use again this part context and if you see there is something called text file so text file property will help us to extract the data from the external data store and here we need to give the file path so for that i am going to go to the storage account and in the properties here we have the abfss path so let me copy this path and i will paste the path here inside double quotes okay and now it should be creating the rdd sorry the rdd is created let me print using the collect function dot collect so it will give us the list of data present in this dot txt file so you can see it has given us the output so it is basically extracting the data from the external source okay and creating an rdd using this spark context okay and similar thing we can do with the other extension of file as well so i have a csv file so for that as well we can use the same code and instead of this path i will replace with the csv file path and you can see the data present in the csv file if i show you here it is the same data present in the string format okay so we have successfully created the rdd with the help of external data sources and we can also create rdd from an existing rdd so basically if you have an rdd present already you can create a new rdd and apply some more transformation on it okay so suppose i use parallelize function to create one rdd suppose i have the numbers as 15 uh, 40 and 8 okay just randomly giving the numbers and then this will create an rdd for sure so we can see the output as well but on top of this what we will do is we will create a new rdd with the help of this existing rdd okay for now i am going to use map function we will talk about these transformation related functions later in the upcoming videos but for now you can just see i am using lambda function 
where where i am going to give an attribute say uh, x where x will take each of the objects present in this data and multiply it by 2 okay so now the new rdd that we have created is basically double the value of this existing rdd so let's check if we are getting the correct output or not so you can see for 15 we are getting 30 for 40 we are getting 80 and 8 multiplied by 2 is 16. So we are able to create a new RDD with the help of an existing RDD and we have also performed some transformation on it and we have multiplied the values by 2. Okay. So we will learn more about the data operations using various transformations in upcoming videos. But for now you can just understand that we can create an RDD on top of an existing RDD. Okay. So with this we have created RDD from an existing RDD as well. And now what we are going to do is we are going to create an RDD from an existing data frame. Okay. So let's create the data frame first. So for that let's have some raw data. So I am going to create tuples having ID and name. Okay. So suppose XYZ and here 2 comma ABC. Okay. And we are going to give a schema for this where we have id column and say name column and now to create a data frame we are going to use the spark session dot and in this spark object you can see we have the function called create data frame function using this we can create the data frame so first we need to pass the data and then we need to pass the schema so we already have this schema variable that we are going to pass it here and you can see the data frame output as well let me show you the output using show function okay so this will create the data frame let's wait so data frame is basically the tabular format of the data so it should give us the output as a table so let's wait so you can see the data frame is created now on top of this data frame we are going to create an rdd so for that i am going to use df dot and let's check if there is something called rdd so you can see we have this rdd class that will help us to create rdd out of the data frame so i'm going to use it and then rdd dot collect let's check the output of the rdd okay so you can see this is the output for data frame and then it is also giving us the output as a rdd as well okay so since there are two records it is giving the output as two rows okay so that's how we can create RDD with the help of a data frame. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you find the video helpful and you might have got an idea about what is RDD in PySpark. We will also learn various transformations and operations on top of the RDD that can be performed in the upcoming videos in this series. Okay. So please stay tuned and please hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet. Thank you.